Hello everyone, good morning. So for today's lesson, we will discuss the chapter 5, Medical Studies at the University of Santo Tomas in 1877-1882. to Fortunately, Rizal's tragic first romance with its bitter disillusionment um, did not adversely affect his studies in the University of Santo Tomas. But after finishing the first year of a course, in philosophy and letters in 1877 to 1878 he transferred to the medical course and during that years of his medical studies in the university which was administered by the dominicans rival educators of the jesuits he remained loyal to ateneo where he continued to participate in extracurricular activities and where he completed the vocation course in surveying. And as a Tomasian, he won more literary laurels, had other romances with pretty girls, and fought against Spanish students who insulted the brown Filipino students. Mother's Opposition to Higher Education So after graduating with the highest honor from the Ateneo, Rizal had to go to the University of Santo Tomas for higher studies and the Bachelor of Arts course during Spanish times was equivalent only to the high school and junior college courses today. It merely qualified its graduate to enter a university. So Don Francisco and Pasiano wanted Jose to pursue higher learning in the university, but Doña Chodora, who knew what happened to Gumburza, vigorously opposed the idea. But Don Francisco kept quiet and told Pasiano to accompany his younger brother to Manila, and despite their mother's tears, Jose Rizal himself was surprised why his mother, who was a woman of education and culture, should object to his desire for a university education. Rizal entered to the university. In April 1877, Rizal, who was then nearly 16 years old, and matriculated in the University of Santo Tomas, taking the course of philosophy and letters. He enrolled in this course for two reasons. First, his father liked it. And second, he was still uncertain as to what career to pursue. So he had written to Father Pablo Ramon, the rector of the Ateneo, who had been good to him during his student days in that college, and asking for advice on the choice of career. But the father rector was then in Mindanao, so that he was unable to advise Rizal. So during his first term in 1877 to 1878 in the University of Santo Tomas, Rizal studied cosmology, metaphysics, geodesy, and history of philosophy. And it was during the following term in 1878 to 1879 that Rizal, having received the Ateneo rector's advice to study medicine, and he took up the medical course, enrolling simultaneously in the preparatory medical course and the regular first year and medical course. And another reason why he chose medicine for a career was to be able to cure his mother's growing blindness. Finishes surveying course in Ateneo in 1878. So during his first school term in the University of Santo Tomas in 1877 to 1878, Rizal also studied in the Ateneo. He took the vocational course leading to the title of Perito Agremensor or an expert surveyor. In those days, it should be remembered. The College of Boys in Manila offered vocational courses in agriculture, commerce, mechanics, and surveying. Rizal, as usual, excelled in all subjects in the surveying course in Ateneo, obtaining gold medals in agriculture and topography. 
and at the age of 17, he passed the final examination in the surveying course, but he could not be granted the title as surveyor because he was below age. The title was issued to him on November 25, 1881. So, although Rizal was then a Tomasian, he frequently visited the Ateneo. It was due not only to his surveying course, but more because of his loyalty to the Ateneo, where he had so many beautiful memories and whose Jesus professor, unlike the Dominicans, loved him and inspired him to ascend the greater heights of knowledge. He was president of the Academy of Spanish Literature and secretary of the Academy of Natural Sciences. He also continued his membership in the Marian congregation of which he was the secretary. Romances with Other Girls Notwithstanding his academic studies in the University of Santo Tomas and extracurricular activities in the Ateneo, Rizal had ample time for love. He was a romantic dreamer who liked to sip the nectar of love. His sad experience with his first love have made him wiser in the ways of romance. Shortly after losing Segunda Katigbak, he paid court to a young woman in Calamba. In his student memories, he called her simply Miss L, describing her as fair with seductive and attractive eyes. So after visiting her in her house several times, he suddenly stopped his wooing and the romance died at the natural death. Nobody today knows who this woman was. Rizal himself did not give her name. Hence, her identity is lost to history. However, he gave two reasons for his change of hearts, namely, first, the sweet memory of Segunda was still fresh in his heart, and second, his father did not like him, the family of Miss L. Several months later, during his sophomore year at the University of Santo Tomas, he boarded in the house of Doña Concha Leiva in Intramuros. The next door neighbors of Doña Concha were Capitan Juan and Capitana Sanday Valenzuela from Pagsanhan, Laguna, who had a charming daughter named Leonor. Rizal, the medical student from Calamba, was a welcome visitor in the Valenzuela home, where he was the life of the social parties because of his clever sleight of hand tricks. He courted Leonor Valenzuela, who was a tall girl with a regal bearing. He sent her love notes written in invisible ink, and this ink considered of common table, salt, and water. It left no trace on the paper. Rizal, who knew his chemistry, thought orang or the pet name of the Leonor Valenzuela, the secret of reading any note written in the invisible ink by heating it over a candle or lamp so that the words may appear. But as with Segunda, he stopped short of proposing marriage to orang. Rizal's next romance was with another Leonor, Leonor Rivera, his cousin from Camiling. In 1879, at the start of his junior year at the university, he lived in Casa Tomasina at number 6, Calle Santa Tomas, Entramuros. His landlord uncle, Antonio Rivera, had a pretty daughter, Leonor, um, a student at the Lac Concordia College, where Soledad Rizal's younger sister was then studying. Leonor, born in Camiling Tarlac on April 11, 1867, was a frail, pretty girl, tender as a budding flower with kindly, wistful eyes. Between Jose and Leonor sprang a beautiful romance. They became engaged and her letters to Rizal 
Yunor signed her name as Taimis in order to camouflage their intimate relationship from their parents and friends. Victim of Spanish Officers' Brutality When Rizal was a freshman medical student at the University of Santo Tomas, he experienced his first taste of Spanish brutality. One dark night in Calamba during the summer vacation in 1878, he was walking in the street. He dimly perceived the figure of a man while passing him. Not knowing the person due to darkness, he did not salute nor say a courteous good evening. The vague figure turned out to the lieutenant of the Guardia Civil. With a snarl, he turned upon Rizal, wiped out his sword and brutally slashed the latter on the back. The wound was not serious, but it was so painful. When he recovered, Rizal reported the incident to General Primo de Rivera, the Spanish governor general of the Philippines at the time. But nothing came out of his complaint because he was an angel and the abusive lieutenant was a Spaniard. Later, in a letter to Blumentritt dated March 21, 1887, he related, I went to the Captain General, but I could not obtain justice. My wood lasted two weeks. Now, let's talk about the to the Filipino youth. So, in the year 1879, the Liceo Artistico Literario or the Artistic Literary Lyceum of Manila, a society of literary men and artists, held a literary contest. It offered a prize for the best poem by a native or a mestizo. Rizal, who was then 18 years old, submitted his poem entitled A La Juventud Filipina or in translation to the Filipino youth. The Board of Judges composed of Spaniards, was impressed by Rizal's poem and gave it the first prize which consisted of a silver pen, feather-shaped and decorated with a gold ribbon. So young Rizal was happy to win the poetry contest. He was congratulated by the Jesuits, especially his former professor at the Ateneo, and by his friends and relatives. The prize-winning poem, Ala Juventud Pilipina, or To the Filipino Youth, is an inspiring poem of flawless form. In exquisite verses, Rizal beseech the Filipino youth to rise from lethargy, to let their genius fly swifter than the wind and descend with art and science to break the chains that have long bound the spirit of the people. So, this winning poem of Rizal is a classic in Philippine literature for two reasons. First, it was the first great poem in Spanish written by a Filipino, whose merit was recognized by Spanish literary authorities. And secondly, it's expressed for the first time the nationalistic concept that the Filipinos and not the foreigners were the fair hope of the fatherland. The Council of the Gods So the following year in 1880, the Artistic Literary Lyceum opened another literary contest to commemorate the fourth centennial of the death of Cervantes. Spain's glorified man of letters and famous author of Don Quixote this time, the contest was open to both Filipinos and Spaniards. Many writers participated in the contest. The priests, news, papermen, scholars, and professors. So Rizal, inspired by his poetical triumph in the previous year, so he entered the literary joist. Submitting an allegorical drama entitled 
El Consejo de los Dioses or the Council of the Gods. The judges of the contest were all Spaniards. After a long and critical appraisal of the entries, they awarded the first prize to Rizal's work because of its literary superiority over the others. The Spanish community in Manila, spearheaded by the Spanish press, holding great indignation against the decision because the winning author was an Indio. But despite all of the obje objections, the prize was awarded to Rizal. A gold ring on which was engraved the bust of Cervantes. A Spanish writer, D.N. Del Fuso, won the second prize for the first time in history. An Indio, a 19-year-old Filipino medical student at that, excelled in a national literary contest, defeating several Spanish writers of his time in Manila. Rizal was particularly happy, for he proved the fallacy of alleged Spanish superiority over the Filipinos and revealed that Filipino could hold his own in fair competition against all races. So, the winning allegory of Rizal was a literary masterpiece based on the Greek classics. In writing it, Rizal, although a student of the University of Santo Tomas, was aided by the kind father, rector of the Ateneo, in securing the needed references materials. The allegory established a parallel among Homer, Virgil, and Cervantes. The gods discussed the comparative merits of these great writers and finally decide to give the trumpet to Homer, the lyre to Virgil, and the laurel to Cervantes. The allegory gloriously closes with the naiads, nymphs, satyrs, and other mythological characters dancing and gathering laurels for Cervantes. So now, let's call on Miss Diaz to discuss the other literary works of Jose Rizal. Let's move on to Rizal, other literary works. Um, in 1879, he composed a poem entitled Ab ABD L. Asis E. Mahoma, which was declaimed by an Atenean, Manuel Fernandez, on the night of December 8, 1879, in honor of the Ateneo Patroness. In 1880, Azarzuela wa, was Junto al Pasig, beside the Pasig, which was staged by the Ateneans on December 8, 1880, um, on the on the occasion of the annual celebration of the feast day of Immaculate Conception Patroness of the Ateneo. In the same year, 1880, he wrote a sonnet entitled A Pilipinas for the album of the Society of the Sculptures. In the sonnet, he urged that all Filipino artists to glorify the Philippines. Later, in 1881, he composed a poem entitled Al MRP Pablo Ramon. He composed this poem as an expression of affection to Padre Pablo Ramon, uh, who, uh, who uh, is the Ateneo reactor who had been so kind and helpful to him. So let's move on to Rizal, visit, visit the Pakil at Pagsanjan. In the summer month of May 1881, when he was, uh, when Rizal was, uh, was still a medicine student at the University of Santo Tomas, Rizal went to pilgrimage to the town of Pakil, uh, which is the famous shrine of Virgen Maria de los Dolores. He was accompanied by his sister, which are Saturnina, Maria, and Trinidad, and their and also their female friends they took a casco um a casco um it is a flat bottom sailing vessel from ano um kalamba to pakil laguna 
Um, and they stay at home of Mr. Manuel Regalado, whose son Nicolas, uh, who um, son of son Nicolas was Rizal, friend in Manila. Rizal and his companion were fascinated by the famous turumba. Turumba ano, um, are the people who dancing in the streets during the proces procession in honor of the miraculous Virgen Maria de los Dolores. In Paquil, he was infatuated by a pretty girl colegiala, which is Vicenta Ibardolosa, who was skillfully played at the Regalado home. From Paquil, Rizal and his companion made side trip to Pagsanjan for two reasons. The first reason was Pagsanjan as the native town of Rizal, one of Rizal's girlf girlfriends in Manila. And the second one is to see the world famed Pagsanjan Falls. So, let's move on to champion of Filipino students. Rizal was the champion of the Philippine student in their frequent fight against the arrogant Spanish students um, who were often, often surpassed by the Filipinos in classwork and who insultingly called their brown, brown classmates as Indio, Chongo, and the Filipino students called them, called them also as Castilla, Bangus. In 1880, um, in 1880, he found the secret. Uh, he found a secret society of Filipino students in the University of Santo Tomas called Compa Companierismo or Compa Comradeship, um, we, whose members were called Companions of Jehu. After the um, after the valiant Hebrew who fought. Armeans and ruled the kingdom of Israel for 28 years from 843 to 816 BC. He was the chief of his of the secretary student society with his cousin from Batangas, Galicano Apasible as a secretary. As a chief, Rizal led the Filipino students into combat against the Spanish students in various street fights. In one, fe in, in one of the fierce encounters between Filipino students and their pale-skinned detract detractors near the Escolita in Manila, where Rizal was wounded on, on, the he on the head, his friend brought him bleeding and tenderly washed and dressed by Leonor Rivera um, in his boarding house, who called Casa Tomasina. So, let's move on to unhappy days at the UST. Rizal, the Ateneo boy wonder who found the atmosphere at the University of Santo Tomas suffocating his, his sensitive spirit. Um, he was unhappy at this Dominican Institute of Higher because of the three reasons. The first reason was... His professor were hostile to him. The second one that Filipino students were racially discriminated against by the Spaniards. As I have mentioned a minute ago, uh, Spaniard students co um, who insultingly called their brown classmates as Injo Chongo. And the last one is the method of instruction. Yeah, 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 yeah was obsolete and repressive. As a result, Rizal, as the most brilliant graduate of Ateneo, failed to win a high scholastic grade because of the unfriendly attitude of his professor. Um, in his novel El Bilibusterismo, he described how the Philippine students were humiliated by the Dominic Dominican professors of how backward the method of instruction was, especially in teaching of the natural sciences. He related in chapter 13 in his novel, the class in physics, that his science subject was taught without laboratory experiments, the which are the microscope and other laboratory apparatuses were kept inside the showcase to be seen by his by visitors but the students could not even touch them.
So, let's talk about Rizal Scholastic Records in the UST 18, from 1879 to 1882. Rizal, upon entering the university, was not certain which course of study he wanted to pursue. Um, the Jesuit priest who had been his former mentors had advised him to take up farming or join the order and be a man of the cloth. However, his taste went towards law, literature, or medicine, and in the end, he decided to um, sign up for philosophy and letters during his freshman year because of the following reasons. The first reason was, um, it was the father would have wanted for him. The second one is he had failed to seek the advice of the rector of Ateneo, Father Ramon Pablo. Um, in 1877 to 1888, he finished his first course in philosophy and letters with an excellent grade. And these uh, um, this grades, this grades are excellent, uh, which are the subject was um, the subject was cosmology and metaphysics, theodicy, and history of philosophy. So next is I. Um. So after his completing year, after his first year in eighteen seventy eight to. 1879, Rizal decided to take up medicine as his university course because of his heart, because the change of his heart was due to two factors. The first factor was he was Father Ramon Pablo, rector of the Ateneo, had advised him to pursue the medicine course, and the second one is Rizal mother had failing eyesight. We, uh, and he thought he owed it to her to become a doctor and cure her condition. While Rizal was in first year, his performance at the University of Santo Tomas was not as ex excellent as his time at the Ateneo. His grade after shifting to medicine had suffered as well. So, the next one is, um, in 1879 to 1880, when he was second year, who took up the medicine course, um, all of his grades were very good. And these are his grades, and anatomy 2, dissection 2, sociology, private hygiene, and public hygiene. Um, in 1881, and in 1880 rather, to in to 1881 when he was in third year, there were three re main reasons of his struggling academic performance. Um, the first reason was Rizal was not satisfied with the system of education at the university. The second one are there were many pl there were plenty of things to distract a young man in the peak of his youth the last one is medicine was not results true vocation so let's move on to um, um in 1881 to 1882 he finished his medical course and all of his grades were very good um in his fourth year, medical pathology, surgical pathology, obstetrics, uh, he got a grade as very good. So, let's move on to decision to study abroad. After finishing the fourth year of his medical course at the University of Santo Tomas, Rizal decided to study in Spain because he couldn't endure the ramp rampant bigotry, discrimination, and hostility in UST. His older brother and also his two sisters, which are Saturnina and Lucia, and also Uncle Antonio Rivera, the Valenzuela family, and some of his friends approved of his going to Spain. He did not seek his parents' permission and blessing to go abroad because he knew that they 
parents, especially his mother, would disapprove of it. And even his beloved Leonor, um, he had enough common sense to know that Leonor, being a woman, young and dramatic at that, could not keep a secret. Thus, Rizal parents, Leonor and Spanish authorities knew nothing of his decision to go abroad in order to finish his studies in Spain where the professors were more liberal than those of the University of Santo Tomas. And that's the end of our report. And thank you for listening. Here's our references.